Hello again and welcome to Daily Meditations. It is really my joy and my pleasure to be here again with Cheryl to hopefully enjoy with you and break open with you for ourselves first the treasures of the readings of Lent. We are not having a saint today, but we do have an opening prayer, and that would be the collect, and I'd like to share that with you, and then Cheryl will read from the book of John the next passage that is for our consideration. The opening prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to be reading uh, verses 31 to 47 in the fifth chapter of John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify, testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept your human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish— These works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Jim, who are these Jews that... that, uh, Jesus is talking to? I think he's talking to us. It's, it's amazing. Obviously, back 2,000 years ago, they would have been people who would have been so trusting mm-hmm. in the message of Moses. And that's why this last part you read is really very, um, mm-hmm. it is so incriminating. Because it says if you had believed Moses or if you believed the scriptures, you would have gotten this. But mm-hmm. boy, are you dense. You just don't, you don't believe. You think that the eternal life is in this scripture, but you don't believe it. Mm-hmm. I think these people that John is talking about were this, the resistors, the ones that John's community was struggling with because at this point in church development in the first century, it was really becoming a divide between those that could accept Jesus mm-hmm who could find his message life-giving, and those that, for whatever reason, found it too much. They found that he was just beyond their wildest expectations. Mm -hmm. And those would be people now, us, who just can't take enough. We have not enough faith in Jesus Mm -hmm. to really trust him the way he's asking mm-hmm. us to believe in him 
the way he is asking us mm -hmm. to. As we started this week talking about expectant faith, and then what is, do people, all people have faith? And if they do, what is a mark of faith? And then Jesus starts revealing who he is. And that if, listen, I'm showing you the Father, and if you, you haven't seen him, but I'm showing you what he looks like. This is, this is kind of what he does. This is what his, he's all about. Um, and so I, I think you're right. I think he's, he's talking to people who are already, because we saw it a few days ago, that there were those who were saying, you can't heal on the Sabbath. Who do you think you are? Well, the, he's trying to show who he is and explain who he is, and they're still not getting it. They don't get it. And yet the word that keeps coming up on mm -hmm. this passage you read, um, bear witness, mm -hmm. testimony. Bear witness, testimony, born mm -hmm. witness, testimony. Testimony, bear me witness. Born witness, bear witness. Those were all different yeah. sentences that used that word witness. And what's so interesting, Jesus is saying, I am the witness, mm -hmm. and you don't accept it. It's like in a legal case, there is a witness, and you have a hostile witness. If that person is becoming like repellent and Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you a hostile witness. Jesus is a friendly witness, mm -hmm. but a rejected witness. Right. And that's what he's making them feel guilty about. Right. They don't accept his testimony. Yeah, and, and the testimony is there for anybody to see. And so he's questioning them. Um, St. Augustine of Hippo, if I could read this just for a mm -hmm. moment. He talks about that really... We have to be open to what Christ wants to re has revealed to us. We have to take his testimony and do something with it. And hopefully that means that we take it, we believe it, and it changes, makes a change in us. St. Augustine said this in the 4th century. As Christians, our task is to make daily progress towards God. Our pilgrimage on earth is a school in which God is the only teacher. And it demands good students, not ones who play tru truant, plain hooky. In this school, we learn something every day. We learn something from commandments, something from examples, and something from sacraments. These things are remedies for our wounds and materials for study. So are we going to be willing students to the testimony of God's Word through the person of Jesus Christ? And are we going to listen to the words with faith and obedience? We talked about obedience yesterday. Yep. What are we going to do? So today you say, am I going to be a student of Christ? Am I going to get an A or am I getting an F? And as a student, how will I testify? Mm -hmm. How will I witness to what I learned? In the school of Augustine, it was mm -hmm. not a theoretical knowledge, though he was a genius. It was the proof's in the pudding. The proof is in the action. Mm -hmm. It's James' epistle. I've got to see some deeds. Yes. So what, what Augustine is calling us to, which John is making clear, Jesus' witness is clear. Yep. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to stake our life on that? As a student, will we follow the discipline that it demands? Disciple, discipline, and student all have the same root. To be a disciple is to be a follower, but it's also to be someone in a discipline. You've learned a skill, you've gone mm -hmm. to a class, and you act on it. That's right. All during yeah. Lent, let's find ways that are still open to us that maybe we haven't mm -hmm. traveled. Augustine speaks of a pilgrimage. On these last days of our pilgrimage towards Easter, let us find that discipline that we need to be a witness to the Lord. Till tomorrow, God bless. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.